Okay, today we have a new project. The W1K1, I guess it's pronounced Wiki. Let's switch right here. Uh, it's the robot from Jason's of Star Command. Now, I originally saw this robot in one of my many books. I've got like 50 different books on toy collecting and sci-fi and crap like that. But I never thought more about it. I never saw it on the actual show. Because when the show was on, I was uh, too old to watch that sort of thing. I'd moved on. But uh, I saw this video. So hold on, I'm going to move the camera. Saw this video right here. Maybe we can zoom in. Well, maybe I'll just make this full screen. Anyway, Outsider 238, and I'll put a link to this uh, video in case you'd like to watch it, and you should. But uh, he put together, uh, I guess it's mostly a 3D printed kit. It doesn't walk or anything. That's someone to design based off of the TV show. And this is a, a frame grab from the TV show showing the actual size of it. In my toy books, when I had seen this thing, uh, I assumed it was the size of a small dog or something because there wasn't any reference to size. It was just the the robot. But um, anyway, he pointed out when you watch the video, see that whoever designed that one did a good job. I mean, I didn't want to research anything, but I just put up all the images I could online of the robot and uh, designed my own. Of course, I used Design Spark Mechanical. So I designed all the files the way I thought they looked, the way I thought they appeared to be in the uh, frame grabs and the images I could find online, and went with it with that. Now this particular one here uh, is using the N20 motor and uh, three AAA batteries as the power source, and it's screwed together. But it doesn't have to be screwed together. This bottom will fit tight enough. You can snap it on and pull the top off to get to the batteries which sit in the back more easily. I just provided the screw in case it was going to get handled a lot. You don't have to worry about it coming apart. Now this particular one I printed in white PLA and then masked off and painted, spray can painted the, uh, the gray portions and then hand paint brushed the black which it kind of got a little sloppy. I think I can maybe chip that off if I get in there with an exacto blade or something. I did a little bit better job on the back side. Um, so the only thing I hand painted on this, well spray can the gray, but hand painted the black details basically. I also wanted to see whether the new uh, Bamboo A1 Mini that I have, which since it can print in colors if you hook up the AMS, so we'll swing around here. Um, I set it up the same model and went in and tweaked it for three color printing. Then when I got ready to print I realized I didn't have the black film. I didn't have enough to do it. So I ended up telling it to print uh, just in gray and white and then I went back and hand painted the black parts once again. But I wanted to see how that would work. And the difference is this one you can print in white PLA, mask off, paint, hand paint, and do the whole thing and be done in about two hours. Maybe a little bit longer if you have a slow printer or you're not good at painting. This, when you uh, use the AMS unit, which you know changes the filament every time it comes, you look white, it's got to change to go to gray, it's got to go back to white, you know what I mean? 14 hours. <laughs> 14 hours, and all of this. These are the purges. If you counted all that, it would tell you exactly how many times it uh, stopped to change color, went back and forth. And then this is the actual purge tower. See, this is where it purges from the nozzle. I don't know why you can't just do it all there. But it purges from the nozzle when it changes filaments, and then it also has a purge tower, which is a fairly solid brick of plastic, too. So, again, even though I guess if wasting material and time wasn't an issue, You'd set it up for three color, and if you had your white, your gray, and your black, you'd just let it go, and it would turn you out a part that's that's ready to go. This prints is one piece with supports, and um, I don't know. For the 14 hours or so that that's going to take, it seems to make more sense to me to just print it in one color and, and paint it. So I did. 
and I thought it'd be nice to do a walking version. So this one is just my interpretation. I'm, I'm fully aware that it's not correct to what was probably in the show, but I couldn't find enough proper research images from all angles to, uh, to get it right. I think I got closer than maybe the one that Outsider 238 put together, but, um, and certainly mechanically. I decided to put the switch underneath here so it would be out of the way. And it's a clawfoot walker, as you can see. It would be neat to kind of build one that's about dog-sized. Just based on my books, where I'd seen pictures of this thing over the years, because like I said, I'd never seen the show, I assumed it was like the size of a dog or a small child. Didn't realize it was actually the size, and when you looked at that picture, let's go back to that picture, so you know what I'm talking about, and swing. When you go back to this picture, let's make this full screen again. So this is a frame grab, so there's the guy's thumb, and there's the unit, so I mean that's, that's about it. I was guessing uh, about a hundred millimeters in width and kind of scaled all the details I could off of that. Now I did notice I there's a little teeny blip of plastic there which I didn't work into my design. That little blip of plastic could be added. But um, that's the W1K1 from Jason of Star Command and I'm going to have the files up on Thingiverse in case any of you want to build one. And I'm going to do a build video, because I have all of the parts. That's why I printed that one. I don't need two of these, but I wanted to do a build video. So I have all of the parts printed here. There's not all that much involved, but that, those are the parts, of course, with the body top. And then the uh, motor, switch, and an LED. Uh, the battery holder, you can't see because it's on the back side of here. Because that uses uh, the goop glue, you know, the... E6000. It takes longer to dry, so I wanted to pre-glue the battery holder on onto that part so it'd be ready to go. So I'll shoot a, uh, a build video next, and any of you that want to make one, you can make one. That's of my interpretation of the Wiki robot.